Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here on time for the session that we have uh, structured today. On behalf of uh, Paint India, the media partner for uh, this session, and the host for today's session, Mrs. N9 World Technology and Resil Chemicals. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you to this uh, uh, very important and very pertinent technical session that we have uh, constructed. Uh, I think the times of COVID are, are well documented. I mean, hopefully, as things stand, we are, uh, things are now on the wane in terms of the adverse impacts of it. Uh, but having said that, uh, the sort of lessons that we have learned from this uh, in terms of the importance of health and hygiene and uh, uh, in the context of our own industry, of course, uh, antibacterial and antiviral coatings have become, uh, have assumed greater prominence and importance than ever before. So, uh, in keeping with uh, the flavor of the times and the, the need of the times, I would say, uh, we have this session today and we are very fortunate to have uh, a very learned speaker in the form of uh, the core faculty is Ganesh Srinivasan, uh, CEO of Brazil Chemicals, and uh, the entire team of N9 World Technologies who are at the fore of this technology. So, uh, with that little background, I would like to, I, I will be uh, your host for this session over the next one hour or so, and I'll keep popping up. But for the moment, I'd like to hand over the stage to uh, Mr. Vikram Rao. He's the Managing Director of N9 uh, World Technologies, uh, a very accomplished uh, person in the chemical industry and uh, with, with, with a very... Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, distinguished career in both the chemical industry as well as in the management side, uh, also has a very strong uh, uh, coaching uh, DNA to him. So, uh, you know, that, that's that's something that I always like to highlight because uh, the inclination to share knowledge is something that's very important. So with that very brief uh, introduction to uh, Mr. Rao, I would request him to please uh, take center stage uh, and set things rolling for today's session. Uh, once again, uh, thank you all for being here and look forward to an enriching one hour going ahead. Thank you, Dilip. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, every, each and every one of you in the audience for uh, signing in to attend this webinar, taking time, and I hope that this one hour which we spend together will be meaningful to both you and to us. Uh, let me take the opportunity to welcome uh, and also introduce uh, Mr. Ganesh Srinivasan, who is the Chief CEO of Brazil Chemicals, as well as the Technical Director of N9 World Technologies. Ganesh is a gold medalist in chemistry and rubber polymer technology from Madras. It's from Madras Institute of Technology. He joined Brazil in 1992 in technical sales and support and then went on to set up three manufacturing plants for silicones and silver in Bangalore. Along, along his long-term association with Razzle, he set up N9 World Technologies, Visa Car Care, Vista Car Care brands, and also implemented SAP and ERP. Presently, he has grown up the ladder to become the CEO in the organization while retaining the technical directorship of N9 World Technologies. As a leader innovator, his key focus areas include R&D, innovations, collaborations, technology, strategy, business development, and commercialization in silicons, nanomaterials, and advanced materials for textiles, plastics, and a wide variety of applications. We are, in fact, very proud to have him as, at the helm of affairs in this company. He has won national awards for innovation in silver technology in Bangalore, Nano 2013, uh, CII IPR awards in 2015, 1617, and an innovative company award uh, among the top 25 from CII in 2018. Uh, he was he was featured in the BBC for innovative silver technology commercialization a few years ago. I then move on to Manish Kambe, global head business development of N9 World Technologies. He's a BTEC in textiles, uh, textiles and a postgraduate diploma in international business. He has been, he has an experience of 23 years, a long-standing uh, leader in, in, in N9, in Brazil and N9 World Technologies for more than 20 years. He handles the entire global business development, including India, and has, and we have had the fortune, we have had the fortune 
to grow multiple times under his leadership over the last five, six years. We have Manjunath Ramar, who is our senior scientist for product development research in N9 WTPL. With the, he, he joined us. He has more than 27 years of uh, experience in various global companies like GE and uh, has more than 20 patents filed in his name. Uh, he has been with N9 for the last year and a half and is, and is responsible for research and development uh, of N9 plastics and coatings division. A slew of new products have been developed in, under his, under his uh, tenure uh, in uh, expanding the portfolio of the, of the coatings uh, division across coatings to whether it is paint, whether it is uh, uh, laminate, whether it is uh, plastics and, 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 and a multiple other host of other uses. We have Mr. Satyak Rajhansa, uh, segment manager, uh, who handles the business development for N9 World Technologies in this, in this part of the business, which is other than textiles. He's a polymer engineer from ICT Madras, uh, ICT Mumbai, and an MBA. So 18, he has more than 18 years' experience in various industries like plastics, paints, coatings, etc. He has been associated with us for a long time, and he's responsible for identifying new application areas and segments and managing their diverse business accounts and clients. I would be failing if I did not welcome our, uh, from the audience, our chairman, Mr. Mohan, and our managing director, Mr. Vijayan, who are also in the audience. And last but not the least, all my result colleagues who are, who are sitting in the audience, a hearty welcome to all of you. Thank you. Dilip, I think we can move on to the, uh, uh, yes, please. I think uh, uh, with that little introduction to uh, uh, the premise for today, also the, the protagonist for today, and also our main faculty, Mr. Ganesh, uh, I, I think uh, we, we'd like to uh, hand over the stage and uh, allow Ganesh to please make his presentation. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, today's presentation is all about antivirals and antibacterial technologies, uh, which are uh, going to be applied on coatings and various other functional surfaces. Let me just take you through the background. Uh, we align world technologies, uh, basic expertise and strengths, what we have, our awards and collaborations. Already Mr. Rao has explained the background. Um, we also will uh, go through this network and our strengths and operations. Why, why we are here today in terms of antivirals and antibacterials, the consumer concerns, and how we are going to address it with our technologies uh, currently in the uh, unwell. Um, we go through this N9 Pure Silver, which is a flagship technology we have today for various uh, applications like coatings and uh, paints, papers, uh, textiles, and plastics, etc. And uh, we will go through specific applications with respect to paint and wallpapers and powder coatings. And we'll also discuss how the, uh, about the viruses and how we are able to design products which meet the requirement. So N9 World Technologies, uh, we are talking about uh, a very innovative company here, which is, uh, in Bangalore, which is 100% subsidiary of Resil Chemicals. N9 is the first EPA registered establishment. We have an establishment number from EPA to manufacture and market innovative antibacterial and antiviral technology. So we are proud to say that we have a manufacturing site approved by EPA for manufacturing antibacterial and antiviral. Maybe we are the first company and the only company here for this particular applications. We have a manufacturing license. And uh, we are also very committed to make uh, impact uh, to our consumers and society in the area of wellness, protection, safety, and performance. So these are the four dimensions we focus in delivering value to customers. We enjoy trust over 150 brands and retailers in India and across the world. 
and uh, our flagship one of our flagship brand is in line pure silver uh, we will talk about it more in the coming presentation In nine strengths, uh, we are IMS certified uh, company. We have all the certifications which are, uh, 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 you know, uh, which are needed for uh, uh, running this uh, antiviral and antibacterial business. We are also SA 8000 compliant uh, system in, in place. And we have uh, developed uh, patented unique valve materials. We have over 20 patents in our portfolio. Uh, which are mostly towards antibacterial and antiviral uh, technologies. We have some more new ones coming up now. And uh, DSAR, we have facilities are DSAR approved facility, R&D facility. And uh, these facilities help us to collaborate with the research institutes and also bring in a discipline of research within our organization. We have these certifications since 2008, uh, which is uh, uh, more than 12, 13 years. We have developed a portfolio of new technologies under this uh, DSIR approval. And we develop, we focus on customized uh, solutions where we are talking about uh, every industry we require uh, different product, has, has different products, different technologies for uh, commercialization. And we help them uh, by uh, adding more value added products from our site and customize those products which will fit into their basket. So we have focused on that, uh, uh, you know, strategy to reach out to our customers. Collaborative culture, we collaborate with our vendors, we collaborate with our research institutes, we collaborate with our customers. Partners are very important to us. We create value uh, by bringing novel material from vendors. We work with research laboratories to in, for innovation and with our customers for creating value to the end consumers. So we collaborate across the value chain. Application research support, we have application research support, which is a center we have of excellence. We have in Brazil and in nine where we, uh, we collaborate with customers to develop products which are uh, unique to the customer so that uh, we are able to re meet out the application requirements. And uh, we are, our mission is to bring world-class technologies to market. The idea is to create differentiated products which are global in nature, not only to India, so we have our vision to really go ahead and develop those technologies anywhere available in the world to meet any customer need. So we have a uh, outlook which is global. We also go one step ahead and we go with the co-branding, ingredient branding and marketing support for our customers. We help to create tools, marketing tools uh, for our customers so that the communication of what we create and most of them are tech products. So these technologies are communicated very well to the end consumers through marketing tools. So we work closely with the customers to really reach out to this uh, to the end consumers. Awards and collaborations. Uh, Mr. Vikram already explained. We have several awards we have won in the last one decade. Uh, the recent one is the Asocham Award uh, for innovation, innovative product we launched in the space of uh, cosmetics. And uh, we, our flagship award is a National Technology Award from President of India, which we won in 2016. We won a Nano Innovation Award in 2013, which was a, another milestone award for us. Uh, we have a lot of IPR awards. We have more than 20 plus patents. So we have won many awards for uh, trademarks and IP in several areas. So we won consistently certain awards there in that segment from CII. We also were featured in BBC for our innovative silver-based materials and technologies. And uh, in the area of plastics, we won a national award in the year 2019. Uh, it's again from the Ministry of Petroleum and Petrochemicals. We won this award in uh, last year. So this is another flagship award. We closely work with institutes, IIT, IISCs, ARCA, et cetera, for collaboration of new technologies. Customer support is our forte. We strongly believe in um, customer service and support. Uh, though we are located as a manufacturing unit in India, we have partners and co-producers across uh, the world. Our support to customers in Asia is very unique. We quickly have uh, you know, solutions offered through our uh, local representatives. Also, we have partners in the Europe and US who communicate and work with the brands to bring in uh, you know, new information, the market information, market need at the same time, market the technologies what we uh, develop here 
and uh, help us communicate with those brands. So this is our uh, network, which I have shown, I think most of the important markets are all covered. Consumer concerns today. So as you know that this uh, 2020, we started uh, well, but in March, we, uh, the entire world came to a standstill with COVID-19 uh, disease caused by SARS-CoV-2 virus. And uh, this has sort of uh, put everyone into a, um, you know, reflection more, both internal and external. Uh, one is to address uh, one's own, um, you know, rearranging, reorganizing oneself to work from home and various other things. At the same time, how do you really manage your customer services, product uh, development, and also, uh, you know, addressing the need of the consumer? So this has sort of really changed the way we worked uh, across industries. And um, one of the concerns which uh, majorly came up in servicing customer is every customer today was looking at protection as one of the key requirement in uh, addressing the customer need. And uh, this is where we also had already N9 World Technologies, a leader in this uh, space of protection and uh, antibacterial, antiviral technologies. Uh, we started uh, looking at how do we really help all our customers and the consumers to really, uh, you know, use our knowledge and technology to, you know, upgrade or evaluate to their products at the same time, uh, enable production, better production and better safety to consumers. So in that journey, we sort of uh, looked at uh, various things, and um, that's when uh, we started uh, uh, going through various uh, studies which are available. The major concern, one of the studies which I have posted here is the Cotton Incorporated study, where you see that more than 66% of consumers, they feel afraid, they say, and primarily because uh, they're all worried about their own health and safety in the first thing, and then how do you really engage oneself in day-to-day -day activities because you need to go and interact with people and at the same time, you know, you come across shopping, et cetera, the shopping experience, the consumerism, how do you touch various products which are available in the market, you know, are, are they safe to use, et cetera. So these concerns are very much uh, there with the consumers and 63% expect this experience to change the way they shop in the future. As you know that a lot of e-shopping already has picked up a lot uh, and uh, in that, even then, there are uh, products and materials and contact points, surfaces, where people come across, you need to really interact. Otherwise, you cannot be isolated completely. So having said that, how do you really protect consumers? Uh, the protection to consumer became the paramount factor, uh, and that drives the whole consumer behavior. So coming to this consumer demand and uh, also the choice of anti antiviral, uh, this, uh, as you uh, know that this COVID-19 awareness uh, is so high uh, in all sorts of all segments of population. Now, not only this awareness is high, now there are so many products and offerings and choices available to consumers through various products uh, which are being pumped into the market. Uh, so now the consumer is confused about what is the right product, which is the right uh, chemistry to use, or which is the right technology one should adopt. I think these challenges are uh, really overwhelming, and probably I will try to address uh, whether you know some of uh, those uh, myths can be broken. And uh, so here there are uh, two types of uh, you know solutions offered by the, in the market for antivirals. One is an instant solution. Another one is a durable solution. As you know, these instant solutions are basically products which are uh, disinfectants and uh, sanitizers which are there in the marketplace. They are, uh, they immediately uh, uh, neutralize these viruses, kill the viruses and uh, give you an instant protection. But that protection is not durable. For example, somebody who cleans uh, their hand with hand sanitizer with alcohol based or clean the surface with peroxides or BACs, uh, benzalkonium chlorides, they all kill those uh, viruses or bacteria instantly. But after some point of time, maybe after a few minutes or after 10, 15 minutes, you'll find that the same surface enables the growth of uh, bacteria and viruses again. So it is there is a cycle time, uh, you know, or I would say between the cleanings. There is a zone of uh, weakness or the... Uh, choice or uh, chance that the consumer may be again reinfected if there is a contamination. So 
what is important is to move away from this, uh, 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 not completely from the instant, uh, instant cleaning and uh, sanitization, but also complement it with a durable uh, protection technologies. That is where we play a role in offering consumers what is this durable uh, technologies and how do we help consumer choose those durable technologies. So there are huge, uh, for instant disinfection, there's a huge list of approved uh, technologies available in the EPA site. Uh, this is called the list N of disinfectants. Uh, one can uh, have a look at it. So this uh, tells you, helps you to choose the right uh, instant cleaning solutions. But for the durable technologies, one has to really understand what the technology is, how durable it is, and are these technologies compatible with the current products and solutions which you are offering to your consumers today? Can it be made compatible with that and then offer that value still to the customers? So I think uh, this is what we will go through in this presentation further. And uh, eventually, the, ultimately, the idea is to provide consumers with credible and trustworthy antiviral protection. That is the aim. Let's jump into our specific topic on coatings and how antiviral and antibacterial protection technologies from NIWTPL can help in durable protection for surfaces. Coatings need durable antiviral and antibacterial protection. We call it as AV, AB technologies. Uh, so, you see every every day you come across different uh, touch points, uh, whether it is in the office or in the home. Uh, so you always find uh, that, you know, when you interact and go and go to your mall or an institution or, a, you know, when you work from your kitchen or hospitals where especially people now visit for, uh, you know, testing, etc. So one feels insecure because um, the protection is required in all interaction uh, uh, touch points or the uh, you know, interaction points where uh, safety needs to be uh, built in the system. So having said that, how uh, you know that most of surfaces, especially uh, coming to paints and coatings, they are normally come with uh, three different types of uh, preservation. You know that uh, in can preservation where normally people use biocides to preserve the products uh, during uh, storage and shipment and also uh, you know, there is uh, there is a uh, dry film protection which for which, uh, you know, protection from algae and fungal growth, people use dry film protection, uh, again, biocides based uh, preservation technologies. But uh, there is also a, a surface sterilization technologies. So what I'm going to talk about is surface sterilization and a durable protection technologies, which is the third kind where some of these current uh, preservation technologies which are meant for protecting the product itself is uh, not sufficient to provide a durable, long-standing, uh, uh, you know, value to the consumers in terms of antiviral and antibacterial. So what is the need for this? One is that these technologies, uh, uh, you know, have very uh, strong durable coatings, which means that over a period of years, it should withstand the, uh, the antibacterial and antiviral properties. At the same time, they also have to be safe enough. Uh, most of the conventional biocides and preservative, they are organic based and they degrade over a period of time or in the outdoor, it gets washed away. So whereas if you look at, uh, especially indoors, the safety becomes very paramount because probably kids in the room might touch the wall paints. Uh, you know, and also the floorings, you know that, you know, uh, one has to have really safer floorings uh, because people uh, sit down, eat, touch, the touch points are very high. So you find that the safety of these technologies in terms of uh, toxicity and uh, safety is paramount. And therefore, the, this technology is what we have designed. Uh, take care of two important things, the safety and the durability. So that's how the need is addressed as a solution. So how we address it, we address it through two main technology platforms. One is uh, silver, which is uh, our flagship technology. We have different forms and formats of silvers across uh, domains. Uh, name it textiles or plastics or coatings or uh, paper or name any surface. We have complete the technology solutions for all surfaces uh, through silver as a base material. And uh, the second thing is about 
uh, durability and we address it through some polymeric uh, uh, amine technologies where uh, these can sort of form film forming tendencies which are safer and uh, organometallic in nature so they are more durable to weathering and etc so these technologies are giving uh, the base for giving a durable and safer uh, solutions to all the coating applications we have a host of four or five product lines which will be discussed in the future slides uh, but the technology base is uh, uh, silver and this polymeric coatings so the idea is to provide a 99 greater than 99% antiviral and antibacterial efficacy uh, which will ensure that the minimal required uh, protection is provided to customers without compromising the safety and durability of the product so it's a balancing uh, act so we may, we know where exactly to suggest so our area of focus is protection and uh, surface sterilization sanitization areas among all the coating applications so with this background uh, i just want to jump into this uh, uh, the core uh, you know uh, target uh, organism basically the the viral and the bacteria i would like to throw some basic insights into it so that our understanding becomes clearer how these technologies are going to really help in addressing the need of these uh, need of our uh, coming to viruses you know there are uh, two broad categories one is enveloped viruses other one is non enveloped or naked viruses they are called the other term is captured viruses so the sars cov 2 which is uh, area of concern for all of us this uh, sars cov 2 is an enveloped virus which means uh, it is an rna virus with an rna inside and uh, it has an envelope around it and there are four critical uh, um, ma markers i would say um, for this and uh, coming to the design part of this virus uh, this uh, the virus has got uh, four markers they called as um, you know the nucleocapsid which is a center part of the virus Uh, where the nucleus and the RNA is coated with this nucleo uh, capsids and the then the spikes which are there in the top layer which is actually the part which creates attachment to the uh, human cells when it comes in contact and it has a membrane which is very important uh, piece to hold the bilayer membrane which is uh, holding the uh, the entire uh, virus in intact and uh, also it has got uh, uh, you know the other uh, components all put together which is all the um, you know they mark they call it eg etc so just to give you the uh, design and uh, and what are the factors which causes all these uh, uh, these viruses to go and attach to a surface uh, this basically there are three factors which uh, makes this uh, virus attach the one is actually the van der waal forces between uh, the surface and the virus which is an important criteria second is about the other type of hydrogen bonding because uh, anything which is there with the uh, coh groups and the functional groups on the surface that helps in hydrogen bonding third is about the bonding which happens uh, between the virus and the uh, uh, because the virus again is basically uh, made out of uh, glycoproteins and these proteins have got uh, you know both amines and uh, car carboxyl functionalities and they get charged up this is the electrostatic uh, uh, you know attraction between the virus and the surface so or a neutralization which happens when the coating happens when there is a, a protection so this electrostatic attraction between the virus and the surfaces is an important factor that is influenced by various ph of the surface and also the acidity alkalinity it also has uh, you know the moisture temperature so various factors influence these uh, bonding of the viruses with the surface and one way of neutralizing is to bring a surface which is uh, charged to neutralize the virus uh, because there is a net negative charge on the virus depending on the alkalinity on the surface because the surface of the virus have got patches of positive and negative charges there is a net negative charge at some point of time at a ph below uh, 7 um, and uh, there is a point of contact where there is a neutralization which happens between the virus and the surface if you have a highly positively charged surface and when you look at silver as a material 
Silver is quite reactive with many of the proteins has got the protein, as I said, lipoproteins. They are also called thiol. They have got thiol, the functional groups. And the protein is very quick to react with thiol and neutralizes uh, the COVIDs or the, you know, the spikes which help to attach the, uh, you know, the COVIDs or the, the virus with the surface. So once it gets neutralized, uh, the attachment becomes less and less and therefore the uh, further penetration and protection becomes better. And the survival of the virus on the surfaces uh, comes down drastically because there are so many papers published uh, claiming that the virus is alive for a longer period of time if the surfaces are really not helping them to neutralize them. So the idea is to build production on the surface uh, uh, by coding technologies which are durable coding technologies which can help to reduce the attachment of the virus in the first place. Second is to neutralize the virus when it gets attached. So that is an important uh, thing on the virus and that's how it gets neutralized. And uh, coming to bacteria, bacteria is uh, again made up of uh, lipid and proteins which is, you know, which is again a proteinous substance. Silver again neutralizes the thiol groups. At the same time, it can also penetrate in the form of ions into the bacteria. Therefore, work with the RNA, DNAs uh, and then make it uh, really redundant by not replication, avoiding replication. So that's a fundamental way in which all this thing works. And compared to bacteria, actually the SARS-CoV virus, SARS-CoV-2 virus is quite weak, you know, in terms of energy required to break it or attach it. But at the same time, this is quite infective, uh, the SARS-CoV-2, because uh, it is very close to human um, cell structure. Therefore, the cells accept them very fast. So it's important that you build a, a layer which quickly neutralizes so that before it really attaches and gets into the system, you neutralize it and therefore the transmission time is reduced drastically. So this is the fundamental uh, background on which the silver technology is chosen and the polymeric coating with high cationic charges are chosen so that it neutralizes the uh, viruses and bacteria quickly. Coming to surfaces, as I said, there are so many different types of surfaces and um, you know, we come in contact every day and each surface is made of different materials and end uses. Uh, you know, each surface finds multiple end uses. So uh, it's unique to see that the materials are completely different in terms of nature of material. Therefore, it's important that find the right form and format of these uh, silver products which will uh, fit into this uh, different sorts of materials, integrate with them and provide a continued uh, source for uh, of silver to protect from uh, various viruses and bacteria. So it's important to design the forms and formats. That's where N9 World Technologies expertise come in, in building the forms and format. As you know, we are quite popular in most of the areas where we already commercialize products in a large sense. Also, we have to keep in mind that chemicals which are sitting on the top of each of these surfaces, again, very different, you know, because the surfaces have, uh, for example, you know, wood coatings are melamine based and paints have got acrylic base and polyurethane bases, you know, lacquer coatings and uh, epoxy floor coatings are completely different chemistries and glass is a different material altogether. So it's important to choose the right product technology, right format for that and then fit it into an application composition which can go with the, onto the surface very smoothly and uh, it has to have ease of use and deliver it, uh, you know, into the end application for performance. So that's where we closely work with the chemistries. We already done a lot of research in our compatibility studies. Uh, going forward in the further slides, Manjunath will explain about these uh, when it comes to that. Getting into paints, you know that you have got different types of paints, water-based paints, acrylic-based, oil-based, alkyl resins and polyurethane-based paints for different applications and end uses. And we have studied these uh, paints and done a lot of compatibility studies with the our kind of products and technologies. They do really work well. We already have uh, uh, customers who are using these technologies in this space. Uh, what is the typical advantage why they prefer a 9 over the other technologies in paints. The first thing is it's a sustainable green chemistry. You know, we make sure that there is the least amount of 
uh, antibacterial present in the product and deliver maximum performance. So minimum impact to environment, but maximum performance to the consumers. So that's our focus on green chemistry and sustainability. That drives our innovation. And second thing is our compatibility with the different types of systems, be it solvent or water-based. We are able to design products to go into that. When it comes to an application level, you find that our coatings and frosting conditions are so important that it should withstand temperatures, for example, and pressures in some cases, and processing machines, different blending and processing machine, shear, and so many other things. So the stability is important. So we design those products in nine formats are so stable in those conditions. Compatibility with different kind of recipes. You know, every paint has got their own recipes. They've got thousands of paint formulation. Each one is unique. And uh, we, we can find the right format and fitment of our products into these coating formulations. The last but not the least, the most important is that we don't want to touch the aesthetics and affects, affect anything which is to do with the uh, color and the transparencies of these systems. So most of our products are transparent in nature, so that does goes very well with the whole system. So we have a solution which is so uh, uh, unique and uh, so diverse at the same time, uh, so diversified to uh, fit into many applications. Wallpaper, it's another interesting area, fast growing. We have different types of wallpapers. Uh, some of them most uh, are with uh, PE now, polymeric uh, based, and uh, some are paper based. So you have different surfaces. There are porous surfaces. There are non-porous surfaces. So the technologies that are used for porous surfaces is different from the non-porous surfaces. I think this is one area where we have done quite a bit of work, and uh, we can um, uh, help to build the right product for technologies. I will tell you why our solutions are more uh, fitting into this. Uh, one is wallpapers are so important because the designs are very critical and we don't want to make, uh, you know, have any impact on the design. So the transparency is important. So we design the appearance and also the mechanical properties, especially the paper based and other things is so important. Our products and technologies do not affect that. Highly durable, it should work for uh, four or five years and sometimes lifetime depending on the use and all that. So we have technologies which are durable. And also all types of polymer chemistries, uh, which should be integrated, you know, like some can be in a format like master batches, some can be in the format of liquids. So we have different formats which can combine with your uh, uh, paper coating technologies and offer this antiviral and antibacterial technologies to consumers. Powder coating is another interesting area where uh, you know that because the electrostatic charge particles are generated in this powder coating where N9 particles are also uh, goes along with this uh, powder coated uh, systems, gets deposited on the surfaces of especially metal particles or glass or now the powder coating is very popular for uh, two reasons. Uh, one is it's very durable uh, and it stands for a longer time and also creates a better aesthetics to the consumers. So here we have solutions are very unique. As you know that the powder coating also, uh, after the powder coating, the curing temperatures are 450 to 500 degrees where the powders, uh, resin powders are cured along with the pigments. So any technology, any antibacterial, especially organic technologies doesn't work because most of them degrade uh, around 200 degrees. So where we have a unique uh, uh, format, which is uh, silver glass based technologies, which can go into this, uh, powder coatings and inorganic composites, uh, which are uh, uh, compatible with uh, powders. And also it can be mixed with various other, uh, uh, co you know, components of the powder coating. And it does not affect the resistance and durability, etc. Other than that, uh, the basic uh, properties of the powder coating are preferred, uh, preserved in the process. So having said this, uh, you find that these are, this is again a completely different uh, technology which goes into this. Coming to the efficacy and test results, I think the right person to speak about is uh, Mr. Mahjanath. I would invite him to share uh, his views on this. Uh, Mr. Mahjanath, you can sort of throw some light on this uh, uh, particular thing. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, sir, for updating a disruptive technology and product of NI. 
So uh, before going to actual presentation of uh, technical presentation, I would like to tell about how, how we developed the product for various applications. What are the scientific strategies we utilized to develop the product? Majorly, we are following the three types of strategic, uh, scientific strategies. One is the structured science, and the second is the quality by design and end thinking first. This is very important. Whenever we develop the product, end thinking is very important. Then only we can early enter to the market and with a good quality product. So going forward, just uh, I wanted to explain how we validate our product with a uh, different uh, uh, science-based uh, uh, chemistry and all this thing. So we, here we have chosen two categorical factors and uh, three numerical factors to evaluate our product on end applications. The two categorical factor is nothing but uh, water-based and solvent-based. In the water-based is acrylic-based resin we have used, and second one, the solvent-based we have used uh, polyurethane-based. And also three numerical factor we have selected the loading up one to three percent. The one percent we have a, some reason why we have selected only one to three percent. One is we wanted to see the efficacy with the loading. And the second one, after loading higher concentration, whether it is our formulation is adversely affecting on our end user formulation. Third one, yes, usually the efficacy depends on the thickness of the article. Suppose it is a 1 mm, whether we require 3% or 1 mm, we require 1% or 2%. Here 2% is nothing but a lack of fit point. We already told we followed the quality by design to evaluate our product. And the third one, the third, why I given the 3% maximum loading? So sometimes uh, people thinking uh, higher loading will be given the higher efficacy. That is not true. Actually, that is depends of article end application and article thickness. So sometimes the higher loading also may give the problem on the efficacy as well as the product quality, end of end product quality and the uh, transparency and aesthetic property. So, considering all this aspect, we divided, I mean, divided two categorical factor, categorical factor and three numerical factors. So, you look at these things uh, from one to three percent of water based, uh, we did not see any difference in the, I mean, efficacy is in, increased more than the large scale of two and um, the percentage is more than 99 percent. And also, you can see the trend when the trend, you can increase the the loading of our formulation, the efficacy increases slightly higher and higher. It means that our uh, our formulation working with better working with the end formulation, end user formulation, as well as it is not giving any adverse effect on the efficacy as well as the transparency and aesthetic of the product. So based on this conclusion, what I can say, the maximum loading of our product is the 3% minimum. This is based on the article and the thickness of the coatings and paints. And uh, the AV, if you look at this uh, antiviral properties, our uh, AV properties passed in the two hours. Within the two hours, our uh, formulation start activating and they kill the bacteria and viruses. And 24 hours also passed. The majorly recommended doses from our side is a 1 to 2 percent. But having said this, this is based on the chemistry of end applications. And uh, this type, this formulation, whatever we develop for water-based formulation is suitable for all type of uh, coating application as well as paint application. And uh, uh, before that, we have evaluated based on the standard global accepted standard that is JS Z2801 and 217082. This is a global accepted standard and evaluated through this standards protocol. Going next. Then this, this one is a very critical, uh, especially solvent based is very expensive, expensive coatings people using. We consider our uh, customer also, some people, some uh, some companies are using only water based and acrylic based. Some companies uh, high, and high cost application like a solvent based and polyurethane based. And also this is a two part, uh, two part system also. Actually we developed the green chemistry where it is suitable for the solvent as well as the polyurethane chemistry and all the things. So we, and also it is not only for single part, it is good for the two part also. You can directly by making your uh, two part, you can add it to your uh, production as well as you can give as a pack uh, to the end applications. So here also we found from 1% to 3%, we did not see any, I mean, adverse effect on the formulation here. Why I told two part? Because something, suppose if you load 2% or 3% to end formulation, sometimes it may fail in the part. Part application, parting light applications, or uh, cross linking, it, it will start for immediately cross linking. It is really is not good for the end applicators. applicators. 
So that's why we evaluated after adding our material, uh, the class cleaning property didn't change as well as the potting life uh, properties didn't change and retain the other properties like a uh, user properties and, uh, uh, and attack, attackiness, everything is retained. So based on these things, we recommended one to three percent uh, dosage for this solvent based application, the polyethylene based applications. Going to next. So this is a, one example for why in thinking is first is very important. When we develop the product, if we are not thinking again, what will be happening our product with our customer, customer formulation, so we'll be going to fail. And second one, we can hardly enter into the market to demonstrate our product performance and quality at customer end. You look at these things, we, I already told, one to three percent we demonstrated and after adding the three percent, we did not see any changes in the coating formulation. The trans transparency retained and uh, um, pot life is also retained. So this is a good advantage of our formulation using in the two part or uh, two part coating as well as single part coating. Next. So this is very important. I already our Ganesh sir told about the disruptive technology, why it's very important. Because we cannot use single technology for all the applications. Based on the process of the end application, based on the chemistry of end application, based on the environment of the end application, we develop the product, the left side format, one is the silver particle technology. So our audience have the question, why can't we use silver for the coating application? That is the wrong, yes, you are right. But anyway, particle is very good for the antibacterial and anti, anti, anti microbial application. The problem when you use the particle, the aesthetic property will be going down. Second one, because all the coating application is a monolayer coating only, it never go beyond less than one mm thickness. So when the particle is come in contact on the surface of the actual external surface, it tendency go to the oxidization, the color may change, then end of the day our article color also going bad and fade. So considering all these things, we have developed the silver ion technology is equivalent to the particle technology in the efficacy as well as the durability. And uh, in that we have segregated two, one is a water-based coating, this is based on our end customer. And second one is silver ion technology, solvent-based coating. Yes, we have evaluated antibacterial and antiviral. Everything is passed at uh, customer end and uh, we're happy to give our product for uh, further evaluation. The third one is silver inorganic compost, uh, composite. Yes, you know that powder, powder coating is a not straightforward because here one is the temperature is involving pressure is involving and shear is involving and these are all the things involved to make the powder coating. So considering all these things, we went to the silver inorganic composite which will withstand more than 500 degree temperature and also we evaluated the antibacterial properties as well as antiviral property. So antibacterial properties we have completed and it is showing very promising and antiviral is ongoing. We will be going to expect that those, those data in soon. So that's why we have developed the silver inorganic composite and the last one is the silver inorganic master batch technology is very important for the films and plastic articles and end application food articles and all this thing because uh, I already told why can't we use the additives directly to the uh, plastic article. The problem when you export directly additives to the plastic component but because of silver the tendency to go to oxidization your article may go bad. And, if, uh, and end of the day, efficacy also will go back. So that what we did, we have taken the uh, silver, we inorganic material and we made the master batch, our unique technology as there to make the master batch. And we made the master batch and we are catering that master batch for various applications, including wallpaper also. So this is about our uh, innovative technology, how we develop the product and how we are catering to the, our end customer. The um, next slide I'm going to hand over to our uh, CEO, sir. Uh, sir, I request you to take it forward, sir. Ganesh, uh, if we can request you to unmute yourself, please. Sorry.
can you unmute from your end? Uh, uh, you're you're unmuted now. That's that's good. Okay, fine. So yeah. So getting back to the presentation, I feel that uh, now these are the pillars of our uh, uh, technology development. Uh, we offer rose silver with uh, high efficient efficiency, which already I discussed. And uh, second thing is about broad range of uh, uh, microbes, starting from viruses of different nature and different uh, uh, sizes. As you know that uh, you know the the bacteria are in micron range and viruses are in nano range. The virus size typically vary between 10 nanometer to 100 nanometer, and bacteria are in the micron range. So the kind of technology which is used for neutralizing viruses are a little different. And from the technology is used for neutralizing bacteria. And uh, so this viruses uh, and bacteria and various type of other organisms, microorganisms, uh, we have an effective technology which goes into the system and helps you, uh, you know, uh, reach there. Third thing is about uh, how safe it is built. non hazardous and safety is one of our prime pillars of innovation. We keep in mind that our all our uh, products we comply with the international rules and uh, regulatory, uh, the TASCA and the BPR, EPA, you name any of those. We comply with most of the rules of the world. And uh, third thing is about consumer safety, safer to touch is another uh, pillar wave on which the technologies are built. We have, uh, we keep our consumers, end consumer, whether it is a, a child or an adult or any age group, I think the importance of safer to touch, uh, you know, cannot be undermined. We keep that as one of the core pillars of innovation and uh, leaching. I think I need to emphasize uh, a lot about this uh, because the technologies, uh, we are very known for the non-leaching technologies. And we have uh, technologies which uh, uh, the silver is uh, made to reside in the material, in the complex, in the coating and slowly released so that it gives a durable, long-standing uh, efficiency uh, over a time period. So this non-leaching is an important factor, and most of the current uh, biocides and the preservatives, they are all, most of them are leaching type of technologies. And uh, most important, the combination of inorganic and polymer technologies together gives a, uh, a very durable finish which does not decompose during processing, during handling, during use, and therefore no harmful chemicals are also released because they withstand uh, many of these environmental conditions and so on. So I think that in a nutshell that this designs of a technology, the design and the pillars of a technology are explained in this. I think I leave it to uh, the last slide. We have to, uh, uh, we have this nine contact points. I would request, uh, Mr. Rao, sir, to take over from here and explain uh, what do we do next. Thank you, uh, Ganesh. Uh, thank you, Manju. I think it was, uh, I hope that the audience found this uh, session very, uh, I mean, very knowledgeable, and I'm sure that going forward, we look forward to some time uh, in uh, making it interactive. So uh, what next is the question which uh, I'm always asked in terms of the future of, the, of any company. And now in this context of uh, N9 uh, world technologies as well as SL. When I look back, just a brief context, when I look back five, six years ago, uh, we started with uh, antibacterial for textiles with our N9 pure silver. Even a small order used to enthuse us because the point was that at that point in time, the customers did not see the benefit and it was an invisible benefit. You treat a fabric, it had to go for the testing somewhere, and the person said, yes, it is antibacterial to log past. And then the customer did not have, the customer did not have, a brand did not have a touch point to say, hey, these are the benefits which are, you know, hardcore, you know, it sort of improves your health or improves your muscle strength, etc. But we created the market in India for antibacterial and textiles. It was five, six years ago, and nine. And then the small orders, it started incorporating the bigger brands and everything. We used our philosophy was to, I mean, work with the B2C customers and, you know, romance and create, sell the benefit value to B2C and then go to B2B and, and service the B2B. And then came on other solutions apart from uh, protection and the thing came on to hygiene and wellness and comfort. 
We then had dynamic drying and dynamic uh, cooling technologies, which came on board. And then we still, and then this resulted in a patronage of more than 150 brands. So, and then finally it culminated with techno, with, with collaborative, uh, collaboration with the marketing company called the Consolidated Pathways in US, a supply chain company with Sanitize. And then we introduced Viroban, our antiviral, uh, technology based, uh, solutions. In, in Viroban, anti, anti viral, we have, as Ganesh explained, whether it is part particle silver or ionic silver or, liposomize or even porcelain. And it was therefore natural for us now to use our DNA of product innovation and, 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 and build the way forward on, on the areas of plastics, coatings, and, uh, uh, and uh, laminates, and even paper, leather, you name it. So this, within this division, we operate this as a, as a, as a very distinctive segment. So what is the, uh, what is the future? For us going forward, the future going forward, forward is that we have strong marketing values and we have strong uh, values in the company. Uh, romancing the customer is our pillar. Romancing him with all the fast facts, fast facts for the platforms and romancing is our, our DNA. We know we, we uh, just believe us in terms of uh, what we say, in terms of the, what the product can do, what the product is all about, what the product chemistry is all about, whether it is sustainable, et cetera. And whatever we do has a social background and a concept to it. We are very socially compliant. And this whole company of Resil Chemicals is a very socially, socially compliant and a, so, and a company which believes in social values to, to, to the environment, social values to the customer, and social values to what it uses. And, and there is no end to it, of course. It's a constant effort to build this. As a part of romancing the customer, we have the, uh, our, uh, I mean, we are happy to service a small B2B customer. A small B2C customer or a large B2C, B2B or a B2C client. Our clients can range from three to four lakhs a year to working to three to four, five, ten crores a year customers. So we are happy to do that. And here, you know, we are happy with the, the details are here. Manish's details are here. The uh, IDs are here. Satya's details are here. The ID is here. Please feel free to contact us. We will be happy to service you because that is a pillar of our, uh, our, uh, our, our effort, both technical and, and marketing services. So do not hesitate. And I think even after this over, you're always feel free to access us. It will be a pleasure. Future. What do we do? I think as everybody will say that everybody wants to scale. Yes, we also want to scale. We also want to grow. But I think the difference is that our philosophy in the specialty chemicals division is value added scaling. We are not just going to scale, but we're going to add, it's going to be value added scaling. The focus is on the value add both to the company as well as to the customer. And in the areas of protection, hygiene, uh, wellness, and, uh, and, and uh, comfort, solutions in these categories. So strong focus on innovation is our going to be our, uh, our, our forte and, and, and ensure and continuously to, to search for disruptive technologies across segments, across applications, and across geographies. So in a nutshell, if in case, what is the future? Yes, we would like to grow, but we would like to grow with your patronage, with your support, and also we would like to learn from you as to how we could service you better and how we could uh, build this future for us, both as, as, as clients and customers, as teams, and also for India as a country to make its, make its mark in the global scenario. I'd like to thank again the whole, all my team members who have facilitated this and give us, given us an opportunity and created a platform to give a presentation on coatings, on, on a webinar on, on coatings and, and other uh, technologies. I would now request Dilip to play a two minute video and then we are open to a Q&A session. Thank you. Yeah, we'll have a brief uh, video played right now for everyone.
Okay, thank you for your patience in uh, going through the presentation and also the video. Uh, we have already a few questions that have uh, been forthcoming to us. Uh, in mind the paucity of time, I'm going to filter out some relevant questions and ask those that I believe uh, would be okay. So, uh, the one question that is there, uh, maybe I request uh, Manjunath to, in terms of, uh, even, even if it's at the risk, so be repetitive, I think it's important enough. So, what are the test methods that are used for this? And what are the different laboratory methods that would Uh, I'd request the panelists here. So the question again is, uh, what are the uh, different test methods that are used to test the efficacy of the antiviral technology and what uh, are, are recommended to use it for uh, testing the same? Manjunath, you're on mute. Uh, yeah. I'm trying to... Address. Yeah, this is actually we recommend the globally accepted test method yeah. for anti antibacterial ZIS J JSZ two eight zero one for antiviral IS four two one seven zero two test method protocol. So and also we recommend uh, NABL laboratories uh, laboratories to the I mean, test validation and all these things because uh, in NABL through NABL laboratory we will be going to get uh, reliable data as well as reproducible data. And it 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 it, it, it will give a confidence level greater than 99 percent to our customer as well as so I, I request our customer to perform only NABL certified uh, laboratory at NABL certified laboratory as well as also the global uh, globally accepted test procedure to evaluate our product. Okay, thank you. Uh, a follow-up question, and you could uh, feel that once again, Anjunath, is the durability of uh, uh, the antiviral coating uh, in terms of both its thermal and solid stability, and in terms of you know, yeah, both the temperature I, as well as the time element. Yeah, actually, this is a very good question. Durability, already I told, durability depends on the chemistry and the environment of the end product. Suppose our end product uh, will be using interior or exterior. Based on that, we have considered maximum durability of our these things is of four to five years or end of the article lifetime. The second one, the, uh, you asked about the thermal stability. Yes, we developed the green technology where we it will withstand more than 120 degree temperature and IF pressure, IF processing pressure. So, second one, the storability. Yes, uh, we recommend six to eight months storability of our material uh, with a closed container without exposing under the sunlight. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is again, uh, it, it's related to the usage and the formulation. Now, there, there are two ways of using a typical antiviral. Uh, let's say, uh, by talking of the ingredient, it could either be used in situ in, uh, while manufacturing the original coating, and uh, or it could also be used as a spray-on later. Uh, Satyak, maybe yeah. you, could, you could advise on which is the preferred mode in this particular case. Uh, hi. Uh, generally, uh, spraying is not a durable protection, so our product is designed to be added into the formulation, which can give you know a more effective and long protection to the coating. That is the most recommended mode of addition. Okay. There is also a question on the recommended uh, dosage, uh, but I think that's been answered. But maybe you can just repeat it. The recommended dosage generally varies depending upon the application, the product, and you know the formulation that is being used. Uh, it varies between one to three percent depending upon the application. Okay. Uh, so these are some technical questions. There are a few more, but but in the meantime, there is also one question uh, which is relevant, and maybe Manish can feel that since it it's it's a little more strategic. Uh, you know, our paint industry in India is uh, has a has a great uh, uh, 
uh, number of players, significant and progressive players in the MSME segment. So I think they would like to know what, being a relatively new player in this industry, in the coating space, uh, what is your strategy to reach out in both in terms of marketing and technology and supply chain support to uh, smaller customers across the country? Okay, okay. So yeah, a very critical part of our strategy has always been to partner uh, very closely with all our customers. So whether it is a brand or a or a, or a or a manufacturer, whether a small or a big. So when we since these are specialty products. So what happens right from the concept stage, our BD team is in constant touch with the customer, explaining the, explaining the concept part of it, uh, engaging with them, taking out trials at their, at, 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 at their facilities, uh, recommending them the right test methods, recommending them the right claims that can be made. And the best part of, and also helping them on the marketing part, the communication part, what can go to the end consumer. And the best part of our, uh, in our case, is uh, our manufacturing is all happening in India. Uh, we are at our plants in uh, Bangalore, and we have our distributor network from different areas where the where the where the where the producers are present. So we, within a very short time, we also ensure that the material is available with them. So it's the right end-to-end -end support which we can, which we can, which we are very resourceful to offer to all our customers. Okay. Uh, thank you. There is also then there is the one question which is related to uh, the safety aspect. So it's the the question actually has two parts to it. A is how is the technology that you're proposing or or you're using how is it different from other products per se? Uh, also, if you could highlight this difference in the form of uh, the safety element. Maybe Ganesh, you could take that, please. Uh, yeah. I will answer this. Uh, so this uh, differentiation of technology comes in uh, four dimensions. Uh, fundamentally, that uh, you know we are looking at performance. That is the first aspect of the uh, product. Uh, compared to other technologies, we don't compromise on uh, the product uh, performance in terms of efficacy. So we look for minimum 99% efficiency. But it is not the only criteria. The most important criteria is ease of use. Most time, the products which are available in the market are not, they don't integrate with the customer formulations and the ease of use in their end, end formulations. So we make sure that all our forms and formats are designed to integrate with the consumers uh, and the brand's products. So this is a, another important uh, differentiation. The third uh, important differentiation is about the sustainability. See, at the end of the day, are we getting the maximum performance with minimum biocides? This is a big question because sustainability and environment is an important element in um, reaching out to the consumers uh, with a safer product and communicate to that consumers. Say, yes, this is the safest product for use, both in terms of safety and uh, environmental safety and human safety. Another aspect is about non-teaching, which is another big differentiation we have. Most of the biocides, even though they are effective, for example, if you say, take benzyl alkali chlorides, which are typically very effective uh, in killing the viruses of bacteria, but they are not in skin safe. So the skin safety aspect of chemistry also has to be looked at. And uh, uh, as an extension of your uh, second part of your question on the skin safety and uh, safer to touch uh, aspect of it, uh, you know that the silvers are used as a... Uh, you know, in many applications, you know, many of products uh, we use in daily life, the silver cups and spoons, which are very commonly used in uh, daily life. Also, we use in silver, silver in mitais, which also even consumed. And uh, you have silver in uh, plates and many other forms, jewelry, where we use silver very closely with our uh, skin and body. And also, silver is used in many of the cosmetics, which is uh, used for uh, protecting the skin. So, these aspects clearly, and more than 5,000 years, silver is used in the industry and by consumers and users in various forms and formats. And whether there has been a you know, resistance against silver, nor there is a, a safety issue with silver. So that's why we fundamentally work on silver-based technologies. And also polymers, as you know, polymers are extremely friendly. Because of the molecular weight, 
and all big and uh, size the polymers none of them are uh, uh, enter the body or none of them really go into a system systemic effects if i can put it so we work on both polymer based technologies and silo based technologies in combinations to reach the end goal of providing a safer alternative non leaching product to the consumers okay uh, there is one more technical question perhaps which uh, ganesh we, you could take along with manju so the 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 question pertains to how efficient the silver iron would be uh, how efficient the coating rather would be after the dispersion of the silver iron in the polymer uh, matrix uh, i will put my view and then probably I'll extend it to manju see the that's why this uh, technology part comes into play where what is the format of silver which is in the, included into your uh, coatings so the coating the formats uh, most of the formats are designed to release silver ion as you know that 1 gram of any metal contains a greater number of atoms 6.023 in total to the atoms so you have plenty of ions which are available even in a small quantity of uh, metal and therefore when it gets dispersed into a surface which is very uniformly coated you will find this availability of silver ions are always there to uh, react with any of the microbes that comes in contact and neutralizes them at the same time after the silver ions are reacting with the any of your microbes it gets reduced again back to silver which means that you are having a complete source of silver available and for the durability over a period of long time is always there so i would emphasize on form right form right format and right uh, uh, dosage of the product depending on the surface i would request manjana to comment on the dosage and probably he can put his thoughts on this maybe he will get there yeah uh, thanks ganesh sir this is actually what ganesh sir told you told is your right uh, and uh, apart from that i would like to add to even uh, uh, this thing uh, our uh, patented technology especially antibacterial efficacy the morphology of the silk it is a totally particle engineering all this silver is not in the same unique uh, different uh, same morphology we have a patented morphology it will kills bacteria uh, uh, bacteria virus in the triple mechanism triple action mechanism so and second one and ions will be converted once ion is converted it will be anchoring into the chelating agent that chelating agent will continuously supply the ions on the surface of the where from bacteria comes in contact so it it activates the killing of the bacteria second one the bacterial property is not a location of on the article this is the bulk properties of article so that wherever you place uh, you will be having efficacy antibacterial antibacterial efficacy for long uh, long duration okay uh there are two questions which i will i, I don't expect answers because these are very specific questions and they are related to price but it's worth highlighting that and and maybe there can be an offline engagement since you've shared contact details with everyone obviously about the impact of uh, uh, price per kg of paint in terms of incorporation i think we should take this offline on a one to one discussion with in the concerned person and yourselves uh, also there are a few uh, people who are asking about how their formulations could be evaluated post the incorporation of your technology so i think also it it becomes very specific because it becomes specific to a particular chemistry a particular formulation uh the the solid base the spu so so there are different things i think it would be good if uh, this could be taken on a one to one interaction with everyone uh, concurrence uh we've almost come to the end of uh, uh, the session including the question answers there's there's just one there are a few uh, you know indirect questions uh, but i just try to encapsulate the the spirit of all those questions and i'll address this uh, point to mr vikram rao uh, everything that you have spoken of is in the context of a formulation right i mean it's 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 a b2b product that's there but if you could also for the benefit of everyone highlight how this technology would have a larger uh, relevance in in a in a mass consumer uh, context you know how it could go beyond just the immediate formulation supply chain and benefit say for the downstream uh, industries like fmcg and also the end consumers like all of us how do you think this technology which is quite path breaking how could it actually have a relevance right down to the end consumer yeah 
Thank you, Dilip. I think, uh, as it was indicated before, there are two kinds of uh, solutions. One is the instant solution and uh, one is the durable solution. By nature of the product that if you were to go into, uh, take a product, for example, if you take uh, any customer who's a B2B customer, who is a startup company or an established company, who buys the core uh, formulation from us, and then he, manage, he, he he distributes it into smaller retail packs, either with adding on per formulations, and then it goes on to formulations which are into spray bottles or any other convenient modes, uh, cash industrial applications, etc. And then it goes on to the customer. So I think what we do is that our philosophy of selling of BTB as well as large companies, uh, I mean, it enables us to get to cater to the market in such a manner that, you know, we are able to offer you retail solutions. But I must mention here that uh, to reach the consumer, uh, in terms of the retail consumer instant uh, solution, it's about spray. As far as the rest of customers, we take, uh, I mean, if we supply our formulations to paint companies or to uh, paper companies or to uh, leather companies, I don't think the consumer is going to the consumer is going to get the benefit value. So it is, it is, it is in, in both cases, uh, the, the customer benefits either through a company's way format or through a retail form. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rao. And uh, I, I, there are a few more questions, but I think in the interest of time, we must draw this session to a close since it was uh, documented to be till about a few minutes past four. We've shot over the time for a good reason because uh, uh, of the content as well as the uh, I, I would encourage everyone to may continue just, to remain uh, in touch with okay. the speakers. May, may I just ask you, Dilip, any of these things we, know, we would like to respond offline? Uh, if they all these questions in the chat box? Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. So, so that's where, that's where uh, we open up a communication channel between yourselves and uh, uh, the audience directly. They have access to your contact details. And if anything were to come to us, of course, we'd, we'd direct it both ways uh, to the right people. Uh, so, so do continue the, the engagement because that's where it would converge into something meaningful, both on a technology, uh, uh, you know, level as well as on a commercial sense. So, uh, I, I must, uh, you know, before drawing this session to a close, I take this opportunity to thank, uh, uh, the entire N9 and Result team who congregated here for this particular session. Uh, in particular, uh, I take the liberty of calling him by his first name, but, uh, Mr. Ganesh Srinivasan, who really put together this presentation and he has, uh, 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 you know, worked on this technology. It's not just the presentation, but he's been at the forefront of developing this technology, which will have, uh, uh, you know, far reaching positive ramifications for our industry. Uh, also thank the audience for being here in large numbers for such a specific subject. Honestly, uh, the response has, uh, uh, you know, exceeded our expectations given that it was, uh, just one core subject on, on one very, very, uh, specific technology. So, uh, thank you to the audience as well. And, uh, I can only hope, uh, we, we're happy to continue to play the role of a catalyst as Paint India, but I do hope that there is a serious engagement between, uh, the N9 and Brazil, uh, people along with the industry so that uh, this technology can see the light of the day and uh, be in uh, commercial benefit uh, for the entire supply chain, you know. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll continue to be in uh, touch with uh, the entire industry. So with the permission of both the audience and the N9 result team, uh, may I please draw this uh, session to a conclusion. Thank you once thank again. You. Thank, okay. you. Thank, thank you. 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 Thank you.